There's one chicken in your backyard. I can't even find it. We'll head around to all the towns. Head away all the day. South Aussie with Carsey's on. Sit down. South Aussie with Carsey. G'day, my name's Cozzy and I've got half an hour of your time to prove to you that travelling in South Australia is not only the best thing you can do, but also one of the coolest things to do. Where do you think we are? Down at Narrow Court near the caves, are we up in the Flinders? Uh -uh, all wrong. We are only minutes from the CBD of Adelaide at Morialta Falls, where incidentally over 300,000 people come here every year to go for a walk and come up here into Giant's Cave and all these cool spots. We'll talk more about that later. South Aussie with Cozzy is all about doing things for free or, or cheap here in South Australia and there's plenty of them underway. First up, let's see what's on the show. I'll tell you why I hate fruit flies in SA. We'll fly an F-18 fighter jet departing from Unley Road and we'll head to the Riverland to check out a great camping spot. But first, it's off to me old favourite, Rundle Mall. You guys know I'm all about taking the road least travelled right around regional South Australia, but it's also the same here in the Rundle Mall. Yep, check out places in the mall that you've never been before. Like this funky little cafe called Jamaica Blue. We're in the Maya Centre in Rundle Mall, upper ground level. So we do table service here. So you come up here and relax, get away from the crowd. We have great window space overlooking Rundle Mall. So at Jamaica Blue we serve great coffee, great homemade food, and we do some great home baked items as well. The item we're most famous for is the lemon sugar muffin with lemon curd in the middle, served lightly warm, perfect. I love old photos like this one when you could actually park your car in Rundle Mall. Have a look at that. Or this one, this is probably my favourite. It's in Rundle Mall when South Australia gathered to celebrate the end of World War II. What a huge happy day for the city that day. Rundle Mall, it's a special place here in South Australia. We're currently in Sturt Gorge Recreation Park at a place called Craigburn Lake. It borders on the suburbs of Blackwood, Eden Hills, Aberfoyle Park, Flagstaff Hill and the new suburb of Craigburn Farm which has just been recently developed. It's fairly steep terrain hence the reason why it hasn't been developed and it is a natural gem. It is, still has majority of its unique vegetation since European settlement. I've got Ben here, you've just rolled up on your bike. Have you been riding this area before? Yeah, I've been riding here since I was a little tucker. Oh, really wicked. And what's yeah. it like? How do you find it? Mate, it's beautiful around here. It's uh, definitely improved uh, from, from back in the day where it was just, uh, you know, pretty rutted out. It's pretty well maintained trails now, so. Well, I've got something to tell you. Now, since I've done up this area here, this is kind of the hub where you start your bike ride. Are you beginner, medium or advanced, would you say? Oh, I'd like to think I'm advanced, Okay, good. probably a medium. Well, these <laughs> trails are actually marked. So see this trail here, it looks really easy and simple. That's the beginner trail marked with the green track. Yep. Here behind us, see how the start of this track's a bit more full on? Yeah. That indicates that this is the advanced track, all marked by purple. And then there's the medium track over there on the green. So they've actually made it easy for people that rock up. You can choose your track and you know that this is the kind of terrain you're likely to see. It's yeah, pretty definitely. cool, hey? Yeah, yeah. Mate, it's starting to rain. You go, you go. Yeah, Show beautiful. us your stuff. I'll let you get started. Take it easy, Cosy. We're going to hit the car. Sturt Gorge Recreation Park was once farming land. There is a homestead up on top of the hill called Craigburn Farm and it was basically predominantly for cattle grazing. This whole area isn't just full of amazing scenery, it's also jam packed full of wildlife. We've seen koalas, and we've seen loads of birds, hyenas and lots of other animals including this little guy we just found, a little long necked turtle. I mean how cool is he? He's hibernating at the moment so he kind of looks a bit fake but it's actually, look underneath him, how cool is that? Oh, hello, I don't want to stick my neck out, look at him, ah! Have a look at the neck on it, it is so prehistoric, it looks as though he is a dinosaur, look at that head and that neck. We 
have a variety of animal life, mainly uh, wetland bird species like the coot. They basically argue and carry on, hence the reason why they're named silly old coot. I'm a massive fan of getting kids to do the stuff that we used to do as kids. You know, the bike riding, bush walks, uh, playing in the lakes and stuff like that. Here, I've just found a patch of this onion grass. Who remembers when they were a child tying the old onion grass and making bracelets and necklaces? Seriously, I've still got it. Never in doubt. I actually just asked that question to, the, to about like six people that are here filming with us today and only one of them remembered doing this. So I don't know if it's just a thing we did in Kadena, but for me, building necklaces and, I mean, call that a halo if you will. You can either drive your car up here and, and park your car, or you can catch a train and get off at Coromandel Valley, Eden Hills, and uh, ride your bike into the park or walk your dog in the park. The cost is absolutely nothing. It, it, it's, it's free, you know, so it's there for your enjoyment, guys. So come and have a look. South Aussie with Cozzy. South Aussie with Cozzy. Time for a South Aussie with Cozzy pop quiz. Can you tell me which road is this? Well, the answer is pretty simple. It is, of course, Unley Road. Now, I have driven past Unley Road hundreds and hundreds of times. And pretty much every time I do, I see this sign here advertising the jet simulator, which is just in there. And I think to myself every time, geez, I'd love to do that one day. I must go in there and have a look, see what it's all about. Well, I can tell you, today is that day. Welcome aboard, Cozzy. All right, I'll give you a bit of a rundown on the basics on how to fly this flight simulator. You've got two main flight displays down here. Mm -hmm. This one's our navigator. Flight simulators were originally designed to teach pilots how to fly aircraft, and we thought we'd open this up for the general public and make it available for anyone to come in and have a go. So we've had people in from uh, uh, age five up to 97 being our oldest customer so far. Okay, that's up. correct, yes. Uh, there's one three zero, you can rotate now. So gently bring that column back towards you. That's right, remember 15 degrees pitch, so just hold it forward a bit there for oh, us yep, now. Gotcha. That's it, perfect. Landing gear up, and we are airborne. All right. We have uh, two flight simulators, one based on the 737-800, which is the sort of aircraft that you might go to Melbourne and Sydney on. It's very, very common, it's the world's most popular aircraft. And in that simulator, we can do engine failures, we can do mid-air emergencies of any type, we can fly over the Sydney Harbour Bridge, over your house even if you like, and also the airports. There's about 24,000 airports on the database, so everywhere from Los Angeles down to Parafield Airport and almost anything in between. And the other one, based on the F-18 Super Hornet, something a little bit quicker. Now someone told me the other day that, and believe it or not, I think this is true, you can actually get your pilot's licence from 15 years of age is that right? I don't know. No, that's <laughs> Cut. Almost everyone that rings up is generally a woman trying to buy a birthday present for a son, a husband or a father. Father's Day gift ideas, Christmas gift ideas, birthday presents. And it's something a little bit different from the average present. So instead of getting a bottle of wine or some socks, come into the flight simulator and try something completely different. So we'll do a bit of a fly around. Beverly Hills are on the right hand side there. So if you bank over to the right, Okay, retracting the flaps. Now as we bank, I'll get you to gently pull back. Just gently. We like to make things affordable to people. So we basically start our packages at $99 for half an hour, up to $169 for the full hour, which is really, really popular. Uh, we get some people coming in for as many as three or four hours at a time. So you must get like loads of phone calls. What is the weirdest phone call you have ever got from a customer? It's funny you say that. I've actually got an interesting one. A guy yeah. rang up once uh, and he had a voucher to come in and fly with us. And he rang up to book in his flight and I said, okay, no problems and he said before we start he said can I ask you where your runway is in Unley and he, he actually thought for $99 he was going to be flying a real airline. After a crack in the first aircraft it is time to get serious and I'm actually going to try their F-18 fighter simulator. What's worked out really well is I had one of these in my size. Medium. So i going to say it's time to go. Oh, uh, that's right in my eye. Okay, let's go.
teenage boys love this thing. You can shoot down the bogeys, land on aircraft carriers. It's something completely different and it's Adelaide's only simulator, which is a fighter jet. South Aussie with Cosby. South Aussie with Cosby. They say there's nothing like a day at the races. And I reckon they're exactly right. You never have a bad day at the races. That's why this lineup is heading to the Roxby Downs Outback Cup. It's one of the best country race meets in South Australia. We're at Roxby Downs, which is 80 k's in from Woomera, which is about 110 k's in off the Stewart Highway. We're 360 k's from Port Augusta. 650 k's from Adelaide. Racing to a community town like Roxby is amazing. Everyone comes together and the community spirit really comes alive. Racing impacts everyone. They might not realise it, but from farriers to horse feed to the people actually taking the bets to the owners and the trainers, and it really just brings the outback alive. The best bit of advice I could give you would be to go to the racessa.com.au, find a regional race day that suits you in a region that you've always wanted to visit, like the Outback, it might be Clare Valley, Kangaroo Island, and then book yourself a weekend away during that time because it is the best time to visit these little country towns when the horse racing's out and about. We come from Port Victoria. And just, Middleton. Yeah, Middleton. Middleton. Just come for a drive, six hours, something to do. Come bit of a tomorrow, so. change of scenery. Never been to the races before, so it's a first for everything. Racing as an industry is so important to South Australia. It's the second most attended sporting event outside of the AFL football, and we have such great coverage throughout the state. So from Sejuna to Mount Gambier, from Clare through to Roxby Downs, there's horse racing in just about every place you can imagine in South Australia. $10 on the one. Racing here today, we've got eight jockeys, four females, four males. You know, it's always kind of been male-dominated sport, but women are getting a lot more interested and, um, you know, there are a lot more of us now. So, but, but we do like to compete on equal terms. Like, we are all just jockeys. We're not female or male, but, but yeah, go girls. And let me add something to that. Am I right in saying that really horse racing is the only sport where men and women compete on the equal playing field, hey? Yeah, that's right. That's, you know, like we do, we compete equal playing field. Um, obviously, which horse you get to ride makes a massive difference. But... Which is my next point. Lauren's <laughs> actually on the horse that I think will win the cup today. So you're my tip for the day. Good luck. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Safe riding. Ciao. My cup rides scratch. Your cup rides scratch? Seriously? <laughs> oh, you're joking. Fashion's on the field, this is one of our finals today, so the person who actually qualifies from today's round will go into the final to win a $20,000 trip to Asia. It's just a fantastic time to showcase your individual personality and really add those flares with accessories like gloves and hats and, and bags. It's just a time for, to get the colour out and about. Whereabouts are you from? I'm living in uh, Western Australia. So you're in Western Australia and you're working for who over there? BHP. So we've got a BHP employee e, over from Western Australia. What brought you to Roxby Downs? I heard about the cup. I uh, met a few locals in William Creek a few months ago and they told me how fabulous today was going to be, so I'm here. Regional fashion has just really evolved in the last 10 years. It's really stepped it up a notch, so we're really seeing it hotly contested with all the locals and also we're getting lots of interstate people coming to attend these events as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a massive round of applause for Miss Outback 2015. It is number six. Classic black and white. She's absolutely nailed it. Everyone come to here just for relaxing. Look around. Everyone smile. There's nothing like a day at the races. It's a great result for me, absolutely dead last. 
You know, a day at the races is the perfect way to get yourself into the regions of South Australia. It's great. So what you do is head to the website, theracesa.com.au, find a race day in a region that you've always wanted to visit, and then just book it in. Because when you're in these regions, when the races are in town, it is the best. The towns are alive. There's plenty going on. South Aussie with Cosby. South Aussie with Cosby. Cozzy, where can I go camping in South Australia? Well, listen up, friends, because I've got a great camping spot in the Riverland, and I've also got a project here that ensures that this place will be great for generations to come. The Catfish Reach project came to be in around 2007, where it was identified that the floodplain and the Anna Branch system was of high conservation value. Catfish Reach is a community environmental rehabilitation project. The community is not just uh, members of the public that you might see fishing along the banks. It's people that have lived here, that have grown up here, that invest an interest through their own passion, whether it be bushwalking, riding their bikes, fishing or canoeing. The National Park has so much to offer for everyone to enjoy and I think that's why it's such an important landscape for everyone. A little bit over 60 campsites here all up. And it's, it's an absolutely fantastic place to camp. I mean, you can see what's behind you now. And just to be able to come onto the river and have a campfire, do a bit of fishing, do a bit of relaxing, it's one of those experiences that there's fewer and fewer places you can do it now. And you can still do it in Katarapka. The aim of the program is basically to assist native fish within the system. They are pretty important in terms of the food chain and wreck fishing. So if you can imagine, we have a bank here within our creek and fish need to get somehow through around that bank. We're aiming to upgrade those areas so that fish can move from this system into the river or back into this system and also improve the water quality for the fish. Catfish Reach enables the place to stay the way that it is. It, it, we're encouraging people to come and visit the National Park. We're spending, a, you know, investing energy. The community members are coming out and playing their part. We want people to come and enjoy the, the space in the same way that the local people enjoy it. What we do at Catarapco here in terms of the ecology program is do seasonal fish monitoring surveys and this gives us an idea of the types of fish using these systems, what abundance they're in. You know, when we were checking these nets, I was sure that all we would find would be loads and loads of the introduced pest, the European carp. But instead, we found plenty of these guys. They're the golden perch, and I guess this is what the catfish reach is all about. These are the native fish. These are what we want, not just for the ecology of the whole system, but from a tourism point of view, they're the fish that are good to eat. Don't go telling them that. So we want to see less carp and more and more of these guys, which there's plenty of. So it's pretty cool. Goodbye, my friend. Kiss it. Oh. There's loads of groups on the Riverland that help keep these holiday spots so awesome. Friends of Riverland Parks have been in um, about 25 years we've been together. You wouldn't be able to achieve what you can achieve without volunteers being involved. We do re-veg work, lots of vegetation to the boat ramp. We do bush bird surveys. We've put in walking trails and done the interpretation signs on those and we maintain them. I know what you're thinking. I bet you're thinking, I wish he was topless in those waders. No, of course you're not. The Catfish Reach program is just absolutely sensational. Obviously, it's great for the environment. It increases the amount of native fish we've got, and it looks after this area. But from a selfish tourism point of view, the Catfish Reach program will ensure that areas like we've shown you today are set perfectly for us as campers and tourists for many years to come. So I reckon it is simply A grade. And also, how good's this? This gum tree, with its roots sadly eroded away, but these things are just magnificent. On a trip home from the Riverland, a simple must do is stopping at one of the local stalls that sell local produce like this one here. It's a double whammy. Firstly, the money goes straight to the farmer like old mate here, big smile. Uh, secondly, the price of the produce is simply to die for. You know, South Australia produces close to a billion dollars of yummy produce every single year. But that's helped by the fact that we don't have fruit fly in South Australia. And did you know this? That South Australia is the only mainland state in the whole of the country that doesn't have fruit fly. 
What does that mean for the state? Well, let's ask Nick. Fruit fly is a pest that lays its eggs in fruit. And the unfortunate thing is when those eggs hatch, we get maggots in fruit. So no one wants to eat fruit with maggots in it. And so other states have to spray all their fruit to make sure this doesn't happen. We're lucky in South Australia, we're the only mainland state that doesn't have it. So we can get by without having to use those chemicals. So South Australia has got permanent quarantine stations protecting our borders on the east and the west. So Sejuna, here at Yamba, Oodlawira, and also down at Pinaroo. But at any time, we also have random inspectors around the state stopping traffic to make sure that we protect the state from fruit fly. It is that simple. We need to keep fruit fly out of South Australia. That's the cue to throw the lemons. I thought we practised it. Oh, man. It's all about supporting local growers. <coughs> I'm starting the lemon detox diet today. We have a major competitive advantage in our export markets where we can move fruit fairly freely. Um, and that gives us a major, not just from a cost point of view, but from a competitive uh, advantage point of view. So look, it's pretty simple really. If you are coming into the fruit fry, fruit fry? Fruit fly free, it's actually really hard to say with a list. Hang in there. We've got to keep these puppies out so we don't have to say the word fruit fly. Uh, basically, if you're coming in with fruit, you've got to eat it, bin it, or declare it. And remember, if you find maggots in fruit anywhere in South Australia, make sure you report it. That's all we've got time for, so I guess I'll catch you on the road somewhere. Go and book yourself a South Australian holiday. See ya. In South Australia, we will go head away holiday. South Aussie with Cozzy is proudly brought to you by the South Australian Tourism Commission. South Aussie with Cozzy. I like bushes.